Hello, dear friends. Hello again. Warmest hello to you. I came back again tonight with too much happy news for you. I am Leila, as you know me, and I'm senior consultant midwife with more than 20 years experience from Iran. Um, I received many messages from you guys from Africa, from Asia, uh, very lovely messages, too much love and kind notes for me. And uh, yesterday till midnight, I, I was receiving many overwhelming messages from my students from different parts of the world because yesterday was calling um, teacher day. And I was so inspired with this much emotional and um, kind words that I was receiving through cards and messages. Thank you from all of you, and I hope I can do as much I can. Actually, um, I cannot say I am perfect, and I'm not completing everything in midwife, but, but I'm trying to spread my knowledge as much as I can. Whatever you wrote for me is in my mind, and you mentioned about some of your condition, your midwifery condition in some countries. Um, I'm trying to help you to... Um, I, I heard about some of you that, yes, midwifery condition and midwifery um, practice is not that much well in some of your places in Africa and Asia. So I can try my best to help you to develop your midwifery um, business and help to people because everything is not in earning money. As you see, if I'm doing this training, I'm not looking to earn money. As you see, I'm doing because I like to help to the humanity. Midwifery is humanity. Midwifery is to help to people to develop, to promote, and for sustainable family. So. Uh, we are, as a midwife, has a very important role to survive the world, to help the humanity as much as we can. And it is my small duty from God that I can help you. So don't forget to write all of your suggestions and notes. I will try to come throughout. I will try even sometimes to find some new solution to some of your boundaries in midwifery. And we will try to work as a midwifery management and entrepreneurship skills because it is one of the important things as the individual midwife and independent midwife. We should empower ourselves in entrepreneurship skills as well. It is the way to cover our knowledge and help to develop our um, business and help to people. I don't know where is my glass. Okay, I will find Thank you so much for your way. Uh, we were talking about very basic midwifery skill. Very, very basic. I started from antenatal classes. As you know, we have many issues in different countries to um, practice antenatal class. I know some of us from some Asian countries, and according my experience, even in some Asian Arabic culture or Asian um, other uh, traditional culture, we are not that much um, welcoming to start this business and this training for people. Because, you know, uh, prenatal classes, uh, it's not that much routinely uh, works in some Asian countries and some Gulf countries as well. I know, I know. Um, there is some reason behind that. Because when I was working in European countries, it was one of the needs, and most of people were looking for that. Actually, it was not even working for all socioeconomic level people. It was working for some medium to highest socioeconomic parents. But I know there is some reason in some other countries and regions that they don't look after um, antenatal classes because they don't know what is the benefits and they don't know what is the advantages for them. Some of them, they have some issue in that places, in that region. For example, um, um, I'm trying to see all of your messages as well. Uh, for example, uh, as you know, 
in most of developed countries and even in Iran, women and men who are highly uh, motivated to attend these antenatal sessions, it is because their experiences of education has led them to value it. And more pragmatically, because they are not dependent on public sectors. Publics, for example, uh, transport for access, and that because of that, they tend to go to, to all the business that are on offer. So they will go to sessions led by midwife at the clinics or midwifery counseling center or midwifery family clinic in some countries like Iran. I'm talking about some midwifery advanced countries uh, in Asia because I know most of our midwifery problem and midwifery um, barrier is happening in Asian countries more than European countries because as I know in European countries um, last 30 years I've seen they were uh, developing antenatal classes and they didn't have this much issue as I was live in Spain in my childhood I remember I was very small kids in Spain in Madrid um, uh, our girls and mothers they were going for antenatal classes so this culture in that in Spain in Italy it was well known for them and it wasn't necessary but during my experience and living in Dubai and in Tehran and other countries, Georgia and now in India, I found it very different. Sometimes it's very amazing for me that after 30 years, still people doesn't know the advantages of um, antenatal classes. But I found these advantages is known for such this kind of people and they trying to attend these classes. But still, for some uh, social economical people, for le less privileged socio economical background, or for some young age, uh, still is not that much mean, and they are not looking for antenatal classes. Especially for this age, for your young age, for this unprivileged socio-economical background is needed. But they don't know why it is necessary and they don't look for that. The other thing that we found that there is some barriers for attendees that they don't want to follow these classes. I found some reason like perception that the content of session was not relevant. Sometime I was uh, working in Dubai and we were trying to make these classes for some uh, families. Um, some of the couples as the Arabic culture and Arabic language people, they were coming in these classes and they were not understanding the language of midwives. So they were not get that much close to the midwife speaker and leader. That's why maybe one of the reasons it is that. Because local midwife should train and practice these antenatal classes, not foreign midwife. It is difficult. And uh, the other things that I found is very important that we want to maximize our attendees in some countries, it's one reason that we are not that much uh, attendees in some countries that you mentioned, like Africa or some Asian countries, it is because um, some of these mothers are smokers. And they don't want to be blamed in this antenatal classes. They don't want to be judged. They like to go in some places that they accept them and let them to continue their own behave. I found many mothers with unplanned baby and very young girls that they got pregnant, they were trying to hide it from others and they didn't like to come to antenatal classes. In some countries, even in some Europe countries, I found some of the girls, young mothers, 
less than 18 years that they were from unprivileged social economical level. In those places, we would not find any girls in, or young mothers to go to antenatal classes. And they were not trying to attend antenatal classes because they were shying to be pointed with others, mothers, and couples sitting there. The other thing I found, it was very, very important, is some of some of the mothers who are um, pregnant with ab abnormally frightened of childbirth. They are frightened for childbirth. They don't want to have normal birth. They don't want to attend these classes. For example, in Iran, we had a high-rated cesarean section um, request because the ladies, they don't want to go for normal birth because they think maybe their geni genital uh, figures will be changed. And they don't like to be this form and this shape in that place. That's why they don't like to attend normal birth. And you know, it was so difficult to convince them not to go for cesarean section because they were caring about their body figures and they're caring about not to have any pain and not to bear any pain at the time of the birth. So they were ignoring antenatal classes because they were thinking we want to push them and force them just for normal birth and delivery. In some other countries, I found something like some mothers um, for, for example, uh, they didn't want to have VBAC and they were scared and they frightened by VBAC techniques through their gynecologist. Actually, their mind was washed and they were scaring from normal, but they were not attending our classes. So, its difference issue is in that, that if we want to maximize our attendance in antenatal classes, we have to check and analyze our location and the place we want to do this practice. And then we have to learn that, try to be far from fear of being judged for the mothers. Try not to judge them, for example, for a smoking, for having considered a termination, or for failing people that to attend antenatal clinic appointment, because some of them, they, they did not attend the antenatal classes, and they are scared you blame them and judge them. Maybe they have some economical crisis problem. The other things, and the person who were, um, who were pregnant with unplanned baby, never should blame and judge them. These people, some of them, they are in their school and at a very young age. So we have to open the door of our clinic and classes for them. Give them that peace and love that they come with their heart. Midwifery is humanity. We will go inside the heart of people and it's only happening by midwifery skills. Yes. Iran is advanced in midwifery with 4,000 midwives graduated, more than 4,000 midwives, more than bachelor degree. And 40,000 midwives, imagine for um, at least 40 million mothers, um, ladies, is not enough. That's why they are trying to improve their um, skills in antenatal classes, and we are trying to teach them, don't look for government help. Midwife is individual job. Yeah, we are in Iran, we are under medical council, gynae and midwife all under medical council. And they do together to help to government to advance the health and increase normal birth. So this is teamwork that makes means for us. This is why Iran birth normal vaginal birth increased in these seven years, because this collaboration between gynecologists and midwives increased and our midwifery mindset changed to entrepreneurship and don't look to government only do these things. They can do by themselves. Please try and share uh, on your Facebook and 
try and pass um, this little knowledge to whoever needs it. It is very small knowledge, but I'm trying to share it and keep it touch with others to solve our midwifery problem and help to people. It doesn't mean everybody should be midwife. No, everybody that help humanity in health and family health, we can help them. And we change some things in the world. So we say, if you have a kindness known, pass it to on, please. Please follow our session in Facebook channel and in YouTube channel, Lily Mom Center LMC. Please press the bell and subscribe. Please share this to your friends. And I hope to see you for 4th May in our free webinar from 10 a.m. according UK time. And thank you for your message, Noor Indah. She says, at present, it's very difficult to give maximum class antenatal coalescing during pandemic. Oh, yeah, this is very important. Why? Yeah, we have the same problem in Iran, but we made it as an online counseling and training. So in this webinar, you will see many Iranian midwives that they change to digitalize midwife to help mothers in this pandemic. Uh, Nurinda written antenatal class, one of the way to reduction mortality care with screening, but in during pandemic, so hard to make this class. Don't worry, Nurinda. That's why we want you all from different country, different practice, come and join together as a midwifery unit to understand how to find solution. Midwifery is like that. You have to be problem solver. We will find now in Iran, telemedicine uh, and um, phone and uh, call information desk became so much familiar for people. And you don't know how much our midwife are happy nowadays because these phone centers, information, this telemedicine, teleconseling, home visit, and many other section, sessions is activated during pandemic that more people are getting accessible to midwifery counseling cares and antenatal classes. It's more than before as well. So we will be together. I will answer to all of your questions. We will find a new um, way to help to people. If you let me, I want to talk a small session in Farsi and then I have to go to another classes. Oh, it's so late for me. So dear friends, ممنونم دوستان عزیز درباره با کلاس های آنتینیتال صحبت کردیم. چجوری در کشورهای مختلف میتونیم اینو افزایش بدیم و اینکه چگونه میتونیم ما اشتیاق مردم رو برای کلاس های آنتینیتال افزایش بدیم. از اونجایی که میدونیم بعضی کشورها اصلا کلاس های آنتینیتال رو علاقه ای ندارن و توجهی بهش ندارن. علتش هم فقر فرهنگی میتونه باشه. دختران جوانی که زود ازدواج میکنن یا حاملگی های ناخواسته دارن که دخترانی که سیگاری هستن و باردار هستن یا مادرهایی که بارداری های بدون کنترل بارداری دارن دوست ندارن این کلاس ها رو بیان پس هنر ما ماما ها این هستش که بتونیم کلاس هایی رو طراحی کنیم که افراد بیشتری راغب بشن بیان توش چجوری هیچ وقت افراد رو سرزنش نکنیم حتی به خاطر نداشتن فقر فقر داشتن اطلاعات کافی حتی به خاطر اینکه اینها نتونستن که مراقبت بارداریشون رو کنترل کنن و نه حتی به خاطر علت های مختلف اقتصادی که نتونستن یک بارداری سالم رو شروع کنن در مامایی در بیزینس مامایی بازه برای اینکه به انسان و به بشر خدمت کنیم و همیشه از توش پول در نمیاد خود من اگه این آموزش ها رو میزه من از توش هیچ پولی در نمیارم ولی عشق اینه که به عنوان یک دین این علم و این اکسپریانس رو بتونم به دیگران انتقال بدم تا اونها هم به دیگر افراد دیگه انتقال بدن به امید دیدارتون در وبینار چهارمه از ساعت ده صبح شروع میشه به وقت انگلستان و میبینیم که ماماهای خلاق چه کارها میکنن Thank you everybody to bearing when I'm talking Persian because we have many Afghani girls that they don't have any midwifery centers and they like to learn about that so thank you for bearing me thank you bearing my accent in english i know i'm not perfect i'm not native english but i try hope to see you all for fourth may at 10 a.m in our free webinar thank you bye bye